What's up everyone? Today on the bench is this. The motor analyzer. I'm gonna show you what I do, how I use it, and what I use it for, and how to benefit from using one. And we'll be testing it on this bad boy right here. This is the Hobby Wing three and a half turn motor of madness. It's gonna be going in my drag car. I'm hoping it's not too much motor, but uh, hopefully with proper gearing and proper timing and such, we can make it work, make it happen. All right, so I'm gonna get this guy here, my three and a half turn hobby wing, and I'm gonna put it on the motor analyzer, and I'm gonna record the data. So, over here, I use my laptop to do the data. So, on here, first line I got, we've got the um, timing on the can and the real timing. This gives you like an average timing on the machine. And then also you have phase one, phase two, phase three for your timing. Uh, KV, RPM, amps, and volts. So, with all this data here, we're gonna take a series of um, timing poles on the motor analyzer and we're gonna compare the data. Um, over here, I've got my 6.5 turn motor that I was running previously. I got my data all on here. Uh, from there, I was able to make some uh, graphs here and here. Um, and this is where it gets interesting here. Um, the amp draw versus your, your KV gain. So as you see, right here is pretty good, pretty parallel. And it starts going up, going up, and it jumps up really big here. So what happens is this is where the motor's becoming very inefficient. This is good here. This is all right. And then when it spikes up like this, that's not where you're going to be making much power. So you draw up all the amps out. Not, not generally good, with lots of heat, and you're gaining very little. Um, you can also gain that much in just changing the gear size, and um, you know, you go up a tooth in the gear, and you still got down here where it's nice and powerful. That's what we're going to try to go for. Um, I was running my motor. Um, 26 degrees or no, 34 degrees overall timing um, and that's starting with um, 22 degrees so added um, some timing on the and the boost in the turbo um, yeah so let's uh, get into it here figure out where the timing marks are on the motor and what the real timing is because these two numbers are never never on so right now it says 30 degrees of timing at 20 here it's 30 there let's see what it really does plug this guy all in there a to a. I like to push these insulators on there as far as I can. Don't need to arc anything out. Okay. The first thing we're going to do, we want to see where the motor timing is at. This one here, push start, push down, push start. Goes automatically tells me it's actually at 20 degrees of timing and the phases are about two degrees out overall. Let's put that in there. So on the fan it says 30. And overall, one, one, <clears throat> Now, turn the dial. This thing here, Push it down, turn it. See how far it climbs up. 
Full power, let run for a few seconds. And there's your numbers. Um, the reason why I keep the keep the volts, that's the U one here, is that you can correct this RPM to whatever volts that your car is going to be running at. Because when you're doing full pull down the down the drag strip, this is going to drop, and um, chances are you're not going to be running 8.2, so you might want to plan your tune for like a 7.8. And then anything you get above that is just all all extra, just all bonus. So plan low. And if you get some extra on there, not a big not a big thing to, to change. So I think we're screaming with just you know that little bit of timing in there. This is going to my drag car. Now we're at nine degrees. Averages are 10.99. So, like I said, this is going to go in my drag car, so I'm probably going to tune it um, lower than my other motor because it's a three and a half turn. Um, and then I'm going to add the boost and turbo until I get to that sweet spot. So let's find out what we got here. That's still screaming at that, you know, still pulling 7 amps. When you're driving um, any of the, the stock cars, like uh, 21.5 stock, this number here is very low. But, as you come up the motors, they want to draw more power. So, just for giggles, let's see what 30 on the can actually does. on the can. What's important here is how close these are together. Um, sometimes if you change the timing just a smidgen, you can change these numbers, get a little bit closer, and that's going to be more efficient than if they're further apart. Like This mortar here is really well built. With it being that much fluctuation, which isn't very much, that's amazing. Because these things are mass produced, they're not hand built or anything. Um, so that, I really, I really like this. Let's see what we got for the screamer. Press start. So that jumped up quite a bit in PV. Let's turn up to 50. Already feeling some heat. Got some 91 degrees in there. Just been doing test pulls on here. Okay, so now we got 50 degrees timing.
Amps dropped up to 12 amps draw, which is quite a bit. Now I know when I'm trying to do some tuning on it that when it says 50, it's actually 40. When it's 40, it's actually 30. So that's good to know. And now we need to get some more data. We'll get some points in between and then we'll make a graph. And you'll really, really see where the gain is and where the sweet spot is. Right now it's looking like, notice from the four poles I did, I probably don't want to do much more. I'll be around the 40 degrees overall maximum timing I'll put in the motor. So I'll probably start off um, even lower than what's on here. I'll probably try to get, um, you know, down to like five degrees of timing or start there and then um, slowly go up with no timing at all in my ESC just so I can get off the line, find out when it hits top speed and then add the turbo and the boost from there and staying within that maximum timing zone. There's no use you know, heating it up. Like this thing here is quite a bit warmer. It's been sitting. It's already up to 100 degrees in there. 100 degrees. So that just shows you what happens when you have too much timing, get lots of heat. And we don't want that. We want to be able to go out, have fun. So we might need to tune that down a bit. And keep in mind that is with no gear on it, no transmission. That's just free spooling up, and it's making that much heat. And that's uh, the number one thing that kills motors is getting too hot. Like one 140 is probably max we want to go, especially for like one run. Like we barely ran this thing on the on the motor analyzer here, and it's getting some heat. So big thing is you gotta manage that heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch more pulls on here and get some data. All right, so here is my data. I put it onto a nice little graph here. So I got a couple anomalies on here. Uh, one being right here at the first spot we tune from. This one here. And this one here is big change here. And kind of slow there and it ramps up again. So we're gonna retest that spot, this spot, and that spot. Just to confirm your data. Um, this might be true, this might not be. I'm kind of predicting that this should be more, or the blue line should be more up. And this one here should be more down maybe. It should be more fluent, but it's not always the case. This is might be just how this motor is. And if it is, I'm probably gonna start my timing here or here and run it from here to here. That way you're using this slope here for your power and this is going to be the gain you get here. Or I could actually go from here to here just depending on if this point here is true or not. So we're going to retest it and see what happens. Alright, did some retesting and I found the anomaly and I fixed it. So, going about with what we have here, um, too big a starting point, and then this be good for the low end, little ramp, little ramp there to get off the line. Goes up, and we'll probably run it to there. So I think that is 47 and a half degrees of timing overall. And we'll start at um, what's that one there? I think that's. Wrong thing. So our number two spot was 22 degrees. So we'll start at 22, go up to 47. So that gives us, you know, 22 ish degrees of timing we can add to it. I think it'll turn out good. So that is what I do with the analyzer. You can crank it on and you know try to figure it out but the best way of doing it is using a spreadsheet putting the data into the table 
and seeing the actual graph. Like you really want to see that graph, see where the line is, see where the power is coming from, and where you're wasting all that power, battery, and all that badness. Keep it in the goodness and get fast and faster. So that's the uh, Sky RC motor analyzer. Let me know what you think. Comment below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Share it with your friends. And let us know how uh, how you make out with it. See what your experience is all about. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time.